of time on my hands. Um, I have a lot of time on my hands. So I'm at home and uh, I can spend a lot of time listening to things and, and I'm learning a lot. It's cool. Yeah, I think that's great and good for you for uh, trusting us with your first time coming off mic. We'll take good care of you. I'm nice. <laughs> Misha's, Misha's pretty nice. Um, I put my first bloom of the, of the season for my biggest desert rose up in the top. Look how beautiful that is, Misha. Oh, it's beautiful. And, and, and there's like on that on that branch, there's like if you can look over its shoulder, there's like five more that are going to pop. But they take forever. Oh my gosh! Norwood, how how often do they bloom? Like, what's the blooming cycle like uh, over the course of a year for those? Well, two things. One, their 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 blooms will last a pretty long time. Um, I guess maybe like out in the desert, as, as long as you don't overwhelm them, because like you hardly water them. As long as you don't overwhelm them, that that bloom itself will last for weeks, and you'll typically get maybe like two good ones out of them over the course of a year and then they go dormant over the winter of course you have central florida we don't really have a winter but you can't get them under 40 degrees so if it gets under 40 degrees you got to bring them all inside or wrap them um, but the weird thing is is that with the desert rose you you have to, if you want it to bloom a lot you have to channel its energy so if you look at like the branches i'll take, I'll take a picture of a, di of a different one i have that i haven't tried to make bloom yet you, you strip all the branches off of it so that it'll focus its energy on the end. I'll show you like a backed up picture of both of them. And don't mind Margaret's tennis balls in the pool in the background. She's a messy dog. She doesn't pick up after herself. Here, I'll show you. Um, and then in the, in, the, in the winter, early spring, depending on what you want it to do, like if you want it to grow a big, thick root, which is called a caudex. They kind of look like uh, they kind of look like potatoes underground. That's what their roots look like. You actually lift them and um, raise them up about two inches and repot them, cutting all the scraggly roots off that are now exposed, and then trim all the branches back to basically a nub. And then it, it puts energy into their root system. And then over the spring, it grows its arms back out. And then it and then and then it blooms. You do that over and over again. They can get like six feet tall. I mean, they're just incredible plants. But they're finicky. They're beautiful, they're absolutely yeah. beautiful, Noah. Really they're nice. Favorite. They're yeah. my favorite. Those and uh, I raise those and I raise African violets. Just, just for fun. Stupid question, but are African violets, you know, presumably colored violet? Well, so violet, violet is not a color. Uh, really? It, 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 it is actually a plant to start with. And the only reason why it became a known color is because Isaac Newton put it in Roy G. Biv. Um, and a, a lot of people are kind of, were kind of mad at him at the time because like blue and indigo are like indigo is a subset of blue. And it's halfway between that and violet. So they were like, hey, Isaac, you know, what's going on? And he was basically like, yeah, I'm Isaac Newton, so I can do what I want. And they were like, okay, cool. So we're stuck with Roy G. Biff. <laughs> uh, but no, violet is, it is a color, but it was first a flower. So I have, I have African violets that are blue. I have African violets that are pink. I have African violets that are yellow. I have some that are white. Wow. Uh, but the, the, the African part is true. They are actually... That particular species of violet is indigenous to Africa. I think they're from like, I think they're from like Nigeria or somewhere. I'd have to, I'd have to look that up. But they're finicky plants too. You don't water them from the top. You water them from the bottom. So they, so you plant them in, you plant them in little pots with holes in the bottom. In order to water them, I've got like a bunch of disposable lasagna trays, and you fill the lasagna tray about halfway with water, and you just set them in it for an hour. And they like and they like drink from the bottom, and then you got to set them on like a rack and let all the excess drip out. So it takes like two hours to water an African violet. Not that you're doing anything because they're just sitting there, but it's very time sensitive. So Misha, you see that picture up there now? So the one on the left is one that I'm letting grow bigger before I strip all the leaves off and get it to bloom. Got it. So okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah. 
So like all that energy, the one on the right's named Catherine. And I, and I don't want to talk about her like she's not here because she is here. So Catherine was huge and just covered in leaves, but it, it takes them longer to bloom if you do that. So what you do is you, oh. just strip, you just strip all her leaves off, and you see she's got one leaf on the end of every one of her branches. If you leave one, she'll she'll bloom. Boom, 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 boom. Then you get your flowers. And then in the fall, when she stops blooming, you let her chill out for a month or two, and then you cut all her arms off. And every time you cut one of her arms off, it splits into two. <laughs> uh, just like men and women after their first kid before their second child. Exactly right. Exactly right, yeah. Tis yeah. a scratch. My girlfriend was complaining about her hair the other day that it wasn't like, you know, because we were, we were going out and she had just gotten her hair cut pretty short and her hair's like naturally wavy. So when she cuts it short, it's got a whole lot of like bounce and like body in it. But it's Florida, right? Like there's a shitload of water in the air. So it's pretty hard to get that, get that real body like it is for her when we're out in Texas. Like when we're out in Texas, I mean, she looks like a straight up buckle bunny, like hair's up you know, flapping around in the wind. Mm -hmm. She's like, I can't, I can't get my hair to, I can't get the body out of my hair. I, can't the, I said, well, I can cut one of your arms off if you want. Like Catherine, we'll just chop <laughs> one of your arms off. Your head will just explode with hair. She she didn't think it was as funny as I did. <laughs> CJ, get up here, bro. Where are you at? Where's, where's, uh, where's the bay at this morning? Are they taking, the, did y'all get, are y'all are y'all are y'all hungover? I'm not hungover from everybody? life. I feel like. Oh yeah. I mean, like the last two weeks were just crazy, Nora. Not not to take it into politics and news, but I just think in general, regardless of who you vote for, it was crazy. So I feel like I was on a mm -hmm. bender, like you know, like a, a kind of like a a bender as an American, and now I'm finally kind of like you know walking around this Saturday morning, getting my bearings, trying to drink a cup of coffee, and realize what the hell happened. Right? Yeah. I true. Agree. Just watch some water polo or some beach volleyball and uh oh, I'm just gonna chill out in the park. That's my plan. I'm gonna say go for a nice walk after I leave Norwood's yard and go into a bigger yard because parks are essentially bigger yards, right, Norwood? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My yard's not that big. Uh the pool takes up most of it. So yeah, if you if, if you need some space to stroll, because you turtles don't really run, do you? Although I did see a clip of somebody put a, a mini turtle on a little mini skateboard and he was chasing a cat around. Did you see that clip going around X? Oh my God, it was hysterical. It, like, it sped him up like 10 times. That cat was like, what in the hell is going on here? I saw that. It was so cute. There's a post from... I, go ahead, Nora. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's a post from Elon from a while back where it says science has gone too far and it has like a turtle with wheels on it. It was actually featured on John Oliver last week tonight as well. So... I was really honored, Norwood, and the thing is I made a post, and I was clearly being satirical, I thought, that I was on John Oliver's last week tonight, and I used the screenshot of the post, and some people in my real life actually thought that I was on the show and watched the interview, because I also, I think, put it on LinkedIn, and no, I was referring to the turtle in the Elon Musk post, so now I've learned to be more, or less literal, I guess, off of X with people. Nah, John Oliver needs the viewers. Just mislead people. That's what I say. Let's go. No, he has to pay me to promote that, though. You know, if he wants my five viewers that I refer, you know, he has to pay me for all five of them. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> That's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But no, what you're saying about, like, the political whiplash, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, man, it's like we went from, we went from Joe can't talk, Trump getting shot at, Kamala is brat. And then Netanyahu came to town. Yeah. Some people want to talk to him. Some people didn't. Mm. Then he went to Mar-a-Lago. Um, yeah, it's been it's been wild. It's been wild. I was in a space yesterday. I don't know if you guys know Sega, but I was in a space with Sega yesterday. We were talking to the 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 and, and then and then like this this kind of stuff happens. I'm in a space with, with my friend Sega who's Nigerian and he's very involved in Nigerian politics and he has like the minister of water and natural resources on for an interview and you start hearing like what they're going through just to get water and you're like okay yeah this I mean like all like the whole world is really heavy right now yeah what are they going through just to get water so the the, the 
the part that I was in, which Sega threw me a mic, and I was like, bro, I don't know anything about this topic. Like, I appreciate it. You know, I'll just hop on and, like, repost so my people see it. Maybe they'll get in here. But um, the part that I was in on, he was giving, like, infrastructure updates on dams that they're building around the country to create freshwater reservoirs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it just they're just out of water. And so they're having to, like, you know, create man-made reservoirs to try to trap some of it. And I guess maybe they don't—I don't—I'm not familiar with the elevation of their water table, so I don't know— what their well system could look like or whatever. But yeah, they're having to like truck water into villages and stuff. And then, you know, here we are shooting at each other. This is, it's it's been a lot, Misha. It's been a lot, CJ. Well, I agree with all of that, but for me, the exhaustion, it will not stop because the Olympics are on now. So, Hopefully, my hopefully, like I don't see much about that on X, but at least that's what's on TV. And I'm on vacation for the next week down the shore, so you know it's Saturday. Everyone just chill out, absorb the zen, and go to welcome. USA. Welcome, welcome to Florida. Are you at? Are you at Gulf Shores? Is that where you're at when you say? Are you at no, Jersey I'm at the actual Jersey Shore in New Jersey. Oh, hell yeah. Not That's yet. Awesome. I'm, well, I'm picking my brother up in Philly in an hour. So. But I know where the Gulf Shores is in, like, St. Augustine. Yeah, well, left of St. Augustine, but yeah. That's where my parents um, I call it the Red – well, we call it the Redneck Riviera. It's you you want to go golf in there? It, well, it's Gulf. Not golf. No, there's a golf course there. There's a ton of them, yeah. No, no I don't golf. I did short drive. Oh, no, you, no you're thinking of, uh, yeah, you're on the wrong, co- you're on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah, like, like LPGA Boulevard and all that. No, I'm not a golfer. I mean, I can. I've done it. I'm not either. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it, and again, if that's your thing, that's your thing, and that's great. Um, but like Churchill said, golf is a is a perfect way to ruin a good walk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'd rather just I'd rather just stroll through the golf course because it's so beautiful and like talk to my friends. Um, it's so frustrating, but I can see how people get behind it. But speaking of the Olympics, okay. Now I don't want to offend anybody, but I am an Olympic purist, and no shame on any of the of the games that get judged. Because I love gymnastics. I love diving. I grew up in a, in a town where diving was huge. I dated divers that won national championships. Um, I have friends that are coaches at diving colleges across the country. But the, but the subjectiveness of it just drives me nuts. And sorry, I, I live right near the beach, so you're hearing one of those planes fly over that's dragging like an Eat at Joe's Crab Shack banner. Um, I just, like, I, my favorite is like the 100-meter dash. Like, my woman can outrun your woman from here to there. And there's no there's no subjectivity to it. No matter what the form is, I don't care what she's wearing, I don't care what her hair looks like, my girl can beat your girl from here to here. To me, that's the Olympics. What say you guys? I agree uh, to some extent. But my question is, do you think it's unfair that there's more swimming events than other uh, sports like People say like that, it's, you know, Michael Phelps won so many golds or whatever, but it's unfair because there's not that many track events. I don't, I don't disagree with that, but I do bristle at calling it unfair, right? So, like, if you're going to say that it's unfair, you have to then compare it to every sport, okay? So, the track and field people have kind of an argument because you have the options of having more versions of track and field. But like the archery, the archers don't. The archers don't, right? Like pretty much it's, just a skill uh, issue. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, if you want to, if you want to play in the space that has the most events, learn how to swim. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, is, what Michael Phelps did is very unprecedented. Like if you look at the team today, no one's doing that many events. Well, I also I also don't think that it's necessarily by default the best because someone has the most. Yeah, true. So 
Michael Phelps is a legend, okay? But now he's built for swimming. He's like 6'8". His feet look like, you know, Aquaman. You know, his feet are webbed. His back is like nine feet wide. Like, the dude was built for swimming. So it just so happens that he plays in that. But, I mean, yeah, he's, he's got the most. But if – okay, how about this? Let's flip, let's, let's, flip, let's flip it around. If you're the gold medalist in shot put, like the long jumper can't throw the shot put. Like you are the best at a very limited skill set. And to me, I would find that more valuable than than being a gold medalist in multiple events where teams are involved. Because he's got gold medals because of relays at different lengths. That's true. But my favorite is track and field, though. I, I just love the 100 meters. To me, that's just so pure. Yeah, that's the first event that ever existed. Well, the mile was the first Olympic event. Legend has it. Legend has it, yeah. Except for, uh, uh, I forget the guy's name that ran from Marathon to Athens or Athens to Marathon to warn of you know the Venetians coming or whatever. And he died on the spot. That's why we run the marathon. <laughs> yeah. 26 miles. <laughs> what, what do you think, dancing? It are, are subjective sports that are judged in a different category in terms of, like, your value system on country-to-country -country sporting events? Subjective sports uh, as opposed to objective sports? Uh, I, I think, you know, when you go – when you think about the history of the Olympics and you go back to, like – ancient Greece, and you look at the the Olympics that were in Nemea in the 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 ancient uh, the ancient Greek Olympics. The spirit of the Olympics was who was the best, which athletes were the best, which independent athletes could outrun other athletes. It wasn't about uh, it wasn't about um, it wasn't about teams as much as it was who was the independent person that could could outrace, outdo, outthrow, out outperform. So I, I think you're right as uh, you know there there were teams, there are teams that uh, that do compete, but I think it's more like who who's at the top of the podium, who's the independent person that can be the athlete. Like when you when you look at a gold medalist, you're thinking about um, I mean teams are important, but I always think of like you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't always follow the Olympics, but I always think of who is the independent person on the top of the, on the top of the podium. Like I would, I thought of like um, people like Phelps or people like Nancy Kerrigan and the, and the Tanya Harding fiasco, like which of the single singular people are going to be at the top? Because when you do have a team, it could be like one or the other people in a race, any, any of the links in a race could be the person that would be dropping the ball. Right. Yeah. So if you have just yeah. one person and they are they are the only person that is responsible for their, you know, the, the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat. That's what kind of gets my heart racing as opposed to, well, a team, it could be like any number of different things. But, you know, yeah. I, it's it's a lot of different things. And, and, and you're right. Every different sport is different. If you've got a shot putter, that's like a, a very specific, a very, very specific uh uh, sport where, you know, um, yeah, every different sport is different. There's, there's a, there's a need for, for each of them. Yeah. I'm not great at speaking. <laughs> you know? yeah. You're doing fine. Hey, listen, I, I told you at the beginning, I'll be your guinea pig. No problem. Thank you. I'm, I'm practicing. I'll make, I'll, I'll make you a co-host. We're going to get this all out of the way immediately because Misha's not de not deciding to co-host today, so I'll make you, I'll make you a co-host. We'll get all this out of the way right now. I think there's I'm some uh, technical glitches on my side. So, no, right, I'm, I'm comfortable being a speaker. You know, I'm not insecure about my position, my standing in life, so I'm cool as a speaker, as a co-host, <laughs> as a listener even. I, if you need to put me down a, a peg like in, you know, the cast system of spaces, no, you can no, do that. Stay right there. I get it. No, you stay right there. You're so freaking slow. It takes you forever to get back up on stage. <laughs> um, and again, I apologize for the planes, but it's, it's 9 o'clock. 
It's nine o'clock on a Saturday, and all the tourists are on the. No, what? You want to hear something crazy? So I just what? searched YouTube for my account to check okay. something, and there's an ad for Rumble.com that uses my account, but it also uses an image of a random black dude. So I'm really confused why my account is used with this image to advertise Rumble on YouTube. I'm trying to figure that out. Is this legal? Can oh you do God. that? Like, I, 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 mean, like, I don't like this either because it makes it seem like I'm advertising myself as a black creator, and I'm. I'm not. <laughs> listen, though. Listen, though. You know. And there's nothing wrong with black creators. I love them. It's just like, I don't want people thinking, hey, I'm advertising this on YouTube if I'm not. Like, yeah. nothing Rebel well, should go to do you're, that. Yeah, because you're purple. I mean, I can see you from here. You're purple. Um, I personally wouldn't care. I think that, uh, you know, copying someone is the is the greatest form of flattery. But I will say some friends of mine and I went out. We went out for a bachelor party. And uh, <laughs> it was a joint, well, it was a joint bachelor bachelorette party, okay? And we had this male blow up doll with us for his fiance that we were carrying from like restaurant to restaurant. And we named him Heath. And he was like this weird looking, like, it was like this weird looking, like, bodybuilder dude. Uh, blown up. I mean, he was fully inflated. We were carrying him around downtown New Orleans. You know, he was his, uh, member was inflated as well and we actually <laughs> we actually created him like multiple accounts like that like we created him like bumble well bumble wasn't out at the time but like trying to think of what was out uh scruff was out so we so we created him this account and like had like what what he likes and what he doesn't like like that like doesn't like sharp objects you know, <laughs> likes like and i mean dude let me tell you he, he was getting swiped so many times. It was freaking hysterical. It was fr like he was getting picked up left and right. And we were responding. And then like people in the area, because it's like proximity, people in the area were like coming up to meet him. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Dancing, your mic's hot. You got a little bit of background noise. Oh, um, okay. okay. That's okay. All right. So we're going to go Bear King Matthew Miller with their hand up. What's up, Bear King? Yeah, thank you. I just... I'm going to sit here and listen for a moment, but I owed somebody in this room um, some kudos. Misha, oh, you were in a room with me yesterday with a lot of people, and some of those people were really hard on you, unnecessarily so. We may not agree on everything politically, and I, I guarantee you we do not. But you did not deserve all the flack that you were getting from some of the people in that room. You comported yourself very well. Um, it was an honor to be in that room with you. So thank you for your words yesterday. Uh, th thank you, Matthew. Uh, that, that means a lot. Um, I, I gave you a follow back yesterday. And um, no, I remember you fr from that room. Uh, no, the context is essentially we were just talking LGBT. And my, my point was um, how uh, even though we probably had advanced relative to like the 1990s, in the last week on a live stream on X, you know, I had someone literally out of the blue say they wanted to rip my head off and kill me because I was wearing just rainbow socks. That was the only thing. That's the only thing that set them off in the street. And I just used that as an example of how I, you know, as a 6'5 dude in a more liberal area of the country, I'm in Stanford, Connecticut, you know, that happening, you know, it, it, it stood out to me. And the thing is, you know, sometimes people, they're bigots on spaces and the host, Miley, she does a great job. It's not Miley's fault, but there's going to be bigots up there. And they sometimes just try to make it like, okay, is that dude living in your head or whatever? It's like, they're missing their point. They're trying to belittle it. It's common kind of tactics, rhetorical tactics. So, um, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it was, it's shitty to go through it. I hate seeing it on spaces, but you, that's kind of what you've got here in it sometimes. But th thank you for saying that, Matthew. And, and Norwood, um, yeah, I, I, I know you hear this type of stuff on spaces. So probably not the, not, not because you're gay, to be fair, but um, <laughs> because you, you know how people on the internet could be. I do. I just think some because I'm fairly new. I've spent a lot of time in spaces the last couple of days. This is my smallest platform by far, and I'm kind of new to the the spaces arena. But one thing I think some hosts need to do a better job of is cutting things off and points are made. Um, I, I see people getting a lot of run on time, especially if it's really hateful. Either direction, it doesn't matter to me. Um, once it's just purely in, in the ad hominem arena, 
and it's not constructive at all. The hosts need to do a better job of stepping in and, and silencing that. Um, and your your point was a firsthand account. And, you know, so often our firsthand accounts get discounted because it's hard to include our own firsthand account. But in your case, there's literally a video of it. And I just couldn't believe that your point was so succinct that all they could do was to over talk and try and silence you and mock. And I, I just thought you handled it very well and you stood up in a, in a very good way. So you were owed that. Thank you, Matthew. That, that means a lot. And, and I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Yeah, from my perspective, um, I'm a free speech absolutist. So if you're a piece of shit bigot, I'm going to let you get a little bit of it out just so we know who you are. But then I will cut you off. Like, I don't I don't believe in quelling it because I need to know who you are and people like me should need to know who you are. So I'll let you get a little bit of it out just so we're sure that you're not kidding or that, like, you don't know other people on stage and it's a joke. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't put up with that shit. And I also don't understand it. Like, for me, as a straight guy, like, some of my dearest friends are gay. In fact, went out last night and saw Twisters because my gay friend, it's his birthday, and that's what he wanted to do, so his husband arranged a party for us, and there was like seven of us, four of them are gay. Man, I am so happy. Wait, why did I get happy. invited to the gay Twisters party? You would have never yeah, made I wanted You, you didn't even know me yet, and I wanted it. You would have yes. never made it from Connecticut, okay? It was way too late. You, just, you walked too slow, okay? Um, I'll give you a heads up next time. I'll give you like months in advance so you can start walking south to Florida. Um, but I just, I don't understand the vitriol. Like, let me tell you, my friend Nick, whose birthday it was, he's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that is a set. And first of all, if you're new to my space, you are allowed to cuss if you use it the way I do. We can't cuss at each other, but I use cussing as a punctuation. Okay, so don't take offense to it. Nick is a sexy motherfucker, okay? He's in the gym every day. He's clean as hell. He's got his nails done. He's got his feet done. He's dressed to the nines. Like, I cannot thank him enough for not liking women because I don't want to compete with that. Like, I'm a beer-drinking, shaggy beard, you know, lazy Florida man. And if I was in the same end of the pool as Nick, like, I'd have to, like... You know, I'd have to shower every day. Like, you know, you know, like it would cause me so much heartache. Like, I don't like lift up the gay people, lift them up. A, his husband. This is the this is really the best part. His husband Joey takes my girlfriend shopping while Nick and I work on the house. Right? Like that's the like. What are y'all thinking? Hating on gay men? Y'all are fucking stupid. You just are. Like I, I, I can't I can't wrap my head around it. And then to hate them for it, it's like, bro, they're like. They're doing the world of, they're they're doing the world of heterosexual males a service by by bowing out of the arena by bowing out of the arena and like Nick's like a firefighter he's got every tool you could ever imagine so like I wanted to put a, I think Misha you've heard this story I wanted to I have a tray ceiling in my master bedroom and I wanted to put up some crown molding not in the upper corner but I wanted to hang it from the bottom of the tray so it creates like a little shelf and hang some LED lights. This bitch comes over with every tool necessary, climbs into my attic, cuts the power to my house, runs lines into the ceiling of my master bedroom so we can plug it in. And now I can control my ceiling via remote control. It can flash with music. I can make I can make the ceiling red, green, blue. And like I couldn't have done that. And the whole time, at the whole time this is happening, his husband's got my girlfriend at the mall like replacing the face on her iPad that she keeps cracking. So he takes her to her Apple appointment at the nerd bar or whatever the fuck it's called while I'm at the house drinking a beer, watching his husband like rewire my ceiling so I can get freaky. Like if you don't like gay men, you are fucking retarded. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I'd like to share my best friend lives down there out on the coast. Um, I have several friends down there and we meet up every year and my best friend when he goes out at night like to a club or something just like your your, your dude he very very uh pretty guy uh i am obvi- i am not i'm a bear so i'm a big chubby hairy masculine dude and when i met this cat i met him as nightlife 
Adam, this is his name, Adam. And, but during the day, he's a high performance auto mechanic, not like your regular everyday cars. He works on street racing cars, cars, you know, that require tire tuning. And, and when he's at work, his, we're, we're from Indiana originally. So his Southern accent is out. He's as, as redneck as anybody I've known. But as soon as he's off work, he gets in the shower, and when he comes out, he is fabulous at him. But he is also extremely handy. Like, we, he's helped me uh, powder coat an engine before in one of my fast cars. He's, uh, I mean, we're dudes, um, which is just something I really appreciate about him. But, like me, I'm a libertarian. I'm libertarian, left-leaning libertarian, because I'm so very socially liberal. But outside of that, I'm, I'm not very liberal at all. But... Uh, you know, we should all get along if we say we support freedom, right? Should be if we support f- free speech and all of these things, we should celebrate everybody's ability to do those things. And when I see certain parties or whatever claim to be these things and then try to institute theocratic rule or something, it, it just it's antithetical to what they are supposedly supposed to be, which are originalists and constitutionalists and and freedom loving people who, for some reason, uh, only like a particular flavor of freedom. No, I totally agree. Uh, to me, America is very simple. Don't fuck with me, and I'll return the favor. That's it. If I ain't bothering you, and I ain't bothering anybody south of eighteen, and I'm not bothering animals, I can do whatever the hell I want to do, and so can you. And the other thing is. <clears throat> There are bad people that will use people of a disadvantage or a minority or a disenfranchisement as cannon fodder. And the gay community is one of them on both sides. They're, they get used by both sides of the aisle, okay? Um, things like, you know, the gay agenda or whatever, okay? Like, yes, there are some bad gay people out there. There's a whole lot of gay straight people out there. Like, just look up how many Catholic priests are currently under indictment in Baltimore right now. There's like 600 of them, okay? Um, But I'll say this, like, there's no way that my friend Nick wants to convert anyone to his lifestyle to have to go through what he goes through. Where he has to like plan out restaurants that that he and his husband can go to and not go to in Central Florida. Like, I'm not saying that agendas don't exist, but in the same way that, like, most Russians don't have anything against Ukraine, okay? Like, that's that's Putin's war. Like, most Americans had nothing against Iraq. That was W's war. Like, you know, who's, whose agenda is it, and then who's getting used to uh, perpetuate their, their side of the argument? Because it's just like, like... It, it would be as nonsensical as saying that, like, black American women are trying to convert other people to be black American women. They would not want that life experience on anybody. That shit's hard. Like, they are actually marginalized, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. Go ahead, Misha. You don't have to raise your hand. Yeah, well, I, I think as well, there's, like, I think intentions matter and, you know, kind of, like, what the person is trying to do, particularly on social media. So, for example, I have some I, – I try to talk with people across – viewpoints and all that. So I have friends who, you know, sometimes will say something that I don't always, you know, say, hey, that's offensive, or whatever. But like during Pride Month, there was, like, you know, a couple of people where they were dropping a hard F word. And I'm like, and I went, whoa, but like, you know, I sent them a DM. I'm just like, hey, like, what's the deal? And it's like, they're testing, they're, they're doing some of their free speech, they were joking. And I was like, y'all, this is like, kind of really icky, like, you're because they're using it to describe something I thought was like, essentially position gay people as bad. And the thing is, they, they heard me out, actually, on that. I, that. That's why I'm saying. So, like, you know, was the statement, the joke, homophobic? Yes. But those people, you know, even though, like, you know, we're probably have a gap in our understanding and whatnot, they were willing to, like, hear out kind of why I thought it was wrong. But then there's other people where it's, like, they're kind of more duplicitous or deceptive trolls where it's kind of, like, they won't drop a hard swear or something, but they'll try to position something where it's, like, gaslighting or they'll try and, like, you straw man where it gets it like down this certain path. And it's like, if you're listening, you think that person is really reasonable. And then suddenly you're go from talking about like something that is, you know, a pretty normal circumstance to like the existence of like satanic cults that are hurting kids, which there are people hurting kids, for example, 
but there's not, uh, I'm sorry, there's not roaming groups of gay people hurting kids. This is not, that's it's not happening. Like, yeah, it doesn't mean sex trafficking, it doesn't mean the other stuff isn't important. And it, I 100% want to address that stuff. But like, I kind of know the path is going now, which is one of the reasons why sometimes I don't talk about the stuff on Spaces all the time, nor would, because Spaces is supposed to be like, Misha, come up here and talk about it. I'm like, oh God, do I want to come <laughs> go through 30 minutes of talking about my thoughts and conspiracy theories and all of that. So usually I just don't and end up joining your spaces to talk about twisters. It was a shit movie, by the way. Oh, it was God. great. Go ahead. Uh, okay, here we go. Go ahead, Bear. Why was it great? Well, that was me, but it was great. I, I thought it was so much fun, Norwood. You thought it was great? Yeah. It was a summer blockbuster. It had a little bit of rom-com. It had awesome tornadoes. I saw it in Dolby. It was like a tornado went through the theater. I saw it twice in Norwood. I liked it that much. What did you well, like about it? Might be, it's, okay, sorry. I'm off mute. I'm putting more ice in my water. Hold on. Okay. In, in its defense, in its defense, okay. On its own, I probably would have enjoyed it more, okay? I brought, speaking of biases, okay, since we're on that topic, I, I brought my bias to the first Twister because when that, when that movie came out, I think it was like 94, 95, I was living in a small town in South Georgia. It was not allowed to be shown in our local theater because the sound system did not live up to like the requirements of the sound effects like it was ahead of the system that our town's little duplex had so i had to go to the next town over which was valdosta that had like a real movie theater with like you know more than two screens to see it and it was one of those movies it was one of those times in cinema where like things change like like i was a, i was a i was born in 1980 so i was a i was you know aware of cinema for real in like the early 90s like when 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 the when the t-rex shakes the ground and the glass of water vibrates like that was a moment for me where i was like how did they do that like oh my gosh it was so amazing and he had bill paxton he had helen hunt he had philip seymour hoffman i mean people in that movie went, like bill paxton is in everything like if you if, if you look up bill paxton's resume he's in everything he's in tombstone he's an alien like look up his imbd helen hunt legend like people from that movie went on to write tar Right. Like it's just such an iconic thing. And so maybe I was in my own head and, and I don't mean to offend anybody that really enjoyed it at face value. But it's all it's on me. I had a hard time enjoying it on face value because of the sequel that it was. Following. I look forward to seeing it only because I have very fond memories from the first one. Um, when my mom was still alive, it was one of the like when I was a kid um it was my friends and i went in one vehicle my parents kind of went in another uh so i drive in theaters and uh, I, I must have been 15 or something and it just so happened that while we were at the 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 drive-in uh, <laughs> a actual tornado touched down about a half a mile from where i was at so uh, the tornado sirens in real life were going off while they're going off in the movie. And uh, the the big screen was shaking a little bit in the wind as we're watching it. And what my parents didn't know at the time <laughs> was friends and I that, that, that went in that separate vehicle. I mean, we were drinking and stuff we shouldn't have been doing at an age we shouldn't have been doing it. And um, we were having the time of our lives. Uh, all the other, you know, a lot of people were trying to flee and stuff. Uh, I don't know if we would have moved if the tornado was right on top of us or not. We were, we were uh, in total immersion there. So uh, I look forward to seeing it only because of my experience with it. But I have heard similar things uh, about the movie, and I, I heard there are only very minimal tie-ins to the first, which I think is. Is, is a bit unfortunate. Um, I did want to, to mention my last point on this topic. You mentioned straight people not wanting to, uh, or, or gay people not wanting to, to quote unquote convert or whatever terminology people want to use these days. I couldn't agree more. I heard so much yesterday in the spaces about uh, people targeting children or whatever. 
and it just doesn't make sense to me. And I always throw out the number that 1.6 million kids go homeless every single year in this country. 756,000 of those kids are homosexual or of the LGBTQ plus spectrum. And, you know, they're being disowned by parents. We don't have to recruit anybody. Parents kicking their kids out do that well enough on their own. They find us because they have nowhere else to go. And I mean, I knew I was, I didn't have it before. I grew up outside of Appalachia, um, unlike Mr. Vance. I actually did. And um, sure. it was not the, it was not the easiest, right? It just wasn't. And um, I didn't have a word for the, for gay at the time. It was just what I talked about. Um, I had no idea, but I knew what I was. And ultimately, I knew for sure, and I'm and not insulting when I, so please do not take this wrong way. I understand some people can't. There's a real story here. I was over at my friend's house at the time. I must have been 10, way too young to see what I saw, but um, he was doing something with that, and I was just hanging out in his bedroom, and I found a Hustler magazine. I had never seen anything like that before, and I opened it, and I saw my first vagina. And I was a huge fan of Star Wars at the time. And all I could do was picture the sack pit, the eight boba when I saw that vagina. And as a child, that actually terrified me because I was like, how am I supposed to ever produce a child with that? It's going to eat me. And I would literally have nightmares about it. So um, for years, I thought I would somehow have to come to terms with having to deal with the sarlacc pit thing and i was not about it and then finally i learned you know all about the the lgbtq plus spectrum i was like oh thank god i don't have to do the sarlacc pit thing uh so i knew from a very young age that i was gay nobody had to recruit me at all oh my god i love that story so much yeah, yeah I, I didn't yeah. want to unmute and like interrupt you but i was <laughs> laughing my ass off while you were talking <laughs> oh, <laughs> i you at the end there floor, bro. <laughs> i'm in the fucking floor yeah, I mean, for me, it's like, okay, all right, there are people's brains that are attracted to kids, and that has nothing to do with their dominant preference, right? Like, there are heterosexuals that are attracted to kids and homosexuals that are attracted to kids. That mm -hmm. is a subset of both sides, okay? So for me, it, 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 like, I'm, I'm, I'm a liberal in the true sense of the word, okay? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm open to your ideas, but you got to play by a few rules. One of them is you can't touch kids. Um, I, rem I remember the day it happened to me that I knew I liked girls. It was at Rio Rancho Elementary. My dad was in the Air Force. We were living in New Mexico at the time. It was at Rio Rancho Elementary. I was in Miss Barrett's fourth grade class. And I had been in the second, because we, we moved a lot. So it was unusual for me to spend more than three or four years with the same group of friends. So I went to third grade. Her name was Miss Hodebeck. Man, she was a monster. Miss Bear was this sweet old lady, okay? And her, I don't want to dox her, but her first name was Amy. Amy walks into Miss Barrett's class. And my best friend at the time was a, was a kid named Conrad, okay? Now, in fourth grade, you're all about the same size, right? Conrad has the same color hair as Amy. They're about the same size. And Amy's in fourth grade, so, like, there's no curves, right? Let me tell you. Conrad and I are sitting there, and Amy cracks the door to Miss Barrett's fourth grade class, and she was just glowing. Like, it was weird. Like, my tummy felt weird. Like, I, I, I was kind of nauseous. Like, I couldn't really talk to her. Like, I did not sit down one day with Conrad and Amy and go, okay, which one of these am I going to like? Which one of these am I like? Conrad was my buddy, and Amy was like an alien. Like, she was like this thing that made me feel incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, but I couldn't get away from her. I wanted to talk to her all the time, even though I had nothing to say. Like, it's it's just one of those things where, you know, you can you can logically walk yourself through it without having to like sell it as oh, you know, you need to accept this person. I don't need to accept you. I need to accept myself and understand internally what I've gone through, because anyone who says, you know, oh well, you know. It's a choice. Well, okay. Well, let's hear about the day you chose. Because I didn't. Like, I've tried varying flavors of ice cream. 
And chocolate is my favorite. I don't know why it's my favorite. I don't know why I like it over strawberry. I don't know why I like it over vanilla. I don't know why I like it over, you know, chocolate mint. Like straight up chocolate ice cream is my favorite. And, you know, I had more experience in trying different flavors of ice cream. But like, I can't hate on you for liking strawberry. As long as you're not forcing a kid who doesn't like strawberry to eat it, enjoy your ice cream. Like, what are we doing here? This is so ridiculous. What's up, Travis? Good to see you. Hey, I'd like to tell you about when I chose to be gay. How's it going, Norwood? Did Twister suck? Yeah, perfect, perfect. First, yeah, first of all, Travis, I'm Travis, really if you could, <laughs> if you could, if you could break it down, the day that you were sit, standing there looking at like you know a naked woman and naked man, and you were like, ooh. That dude's looking good. Tell us about Travis. I don't know. I guess I must I must have the luxury of being um, bisexual or something, or because I never really decided like or was specifically attracted to a man or a woman. But um, I became sexually active very early um, under pressure of the school system. My uh, health teacher uh, in seventh or eighth grade told me go across the street to Planned Parenthood and go get yourself a condom so I felt like everybody was already having sex and it was what I was supposed to do so I was pressured very early to have sex and um, the normal thing was for a man to have sex with a woman so I started having sex with girls I was always safe used protection um, that's one good thing of it but um, I felt like I was pressured early to have sex. And um, you guys are probably going to think I'm crazy or whatever. But in my honest opinion, I feel like my early exposure to sex led me to be a little bit deviant um, and to think about sex as something for pleasure and um, instead of just something um, for procreation, which is obviously what it's for, because how would I be here without a man and a woman getting together? Uh, that said, I am married to a man now. I have been such as been legal in my state. Don't thumbs down me if you don't know my story. I'm telling you my truth. So be respectful. Um, this is this is what it is, okay? This is my story. So I'm trying to be honest with you guys and be upfront and share my story. So in all honesty, I must be bisexual, right? If I don't have a preference for a man or a woman, I was able to have sex with women and, you know, get pleasure of that many times. But then... Um, when I was 16, my first serious relationship, I was with a 19-year-old girl, and she aborted our baby. I didn't always have safe sex, obviously, right? So she got pregnant. She aborted our baby without asking me, and it kind of fucked me up. And uh, I started to not like girls um, in a weird, dark way. Also, having a, a mother that was a drug addict, I kind of feel like this had some some impact on my psyche and made me not like women, too. So something kind of changed with me about age 18 or 19. I started to not like girls. I'd use them as, you know, just a cum dumpster to be fucking graphic and be straight up. You know, I just use them to have sex with and just uh, throw them away and not worry about them. And um, my second serious relationship when I was 18 with the with a girl, um, she didn't come home one weekend. We weren't living together, but we were there. We were always together, right? almost every day one weekend she didn't come home after work and uh actually didn't see her all weekend and i didn't really think too much of it didn't care because i had other shit i was doing i was partying didn't really care and it turned out she was actually with a couple lesbians at her tanning salon all weekend with them and i didn't really think much or care about that really but then a few weeks later she didn't come home again and this time she was with her uh her boss at work and my buddy told me about it and he drove me over to the hotel that they were at where they were in a room upstairs. And I asked the uh, hotel front desk attendant. Uh, sorry, this is kind of a long story. I hope it's entertaining. Stop me if not. Uh, so I asked the hotel room uh, front desk guy what room they're in. And he's like, I'm not going to tell you. And I'm like, well, I'm going to do something that's going to make you know problems for you if you don't tell me what room they're in. And he's like, OK, I'll make a compromise. I'll call the room for you. So he called the room that my girlfriend was with or her boss in, and she answered the phone. And it's kind of weird that the guy was too much of a pussy to answer the phone himself, because he was like, you know, a 40 year old man, and I was an 18 year old kid. Um, and I don't know if I could have kicked his ass, I'm not sure, I never really saw him, so I don't know how big he was. But anyway, uh, I just, uh, I told her to say my name, basically, you know? And uh, so I could hear that the other guy was in the room, and that was enough for me to know. I knew that she was fucking cheating on me. So I went to the Walmart right by, and I got some bingo daubers, and I wrote all over her car that uh, she's a cheating whore. And I wrote on his car that 
he's a piece of shit because he was married and had kids. And then I went to their work. It was a two story glass building and I wrote all over the building just to get my feelings out. And I wrote some things about like how uh, basically just what I just wrote the whole whole story about how they're fucking each other. These coworkers are having sex and whatever. I don't know. So anyway, long story. I'll try to wrap it up a little bit and summarize it. Um, So I had some some relationships where women hurt me really bad. And I feel like, um, and also, you know, just in all fairness, probably I'm, I, I was also bisexual, right? If I'm able to easily like change. But anyway, about age 22 or so, um, I, again, uh, a girl that I was pretty serious with, I found out she's fucking my brother. So um, that was like, I guess the last straw for me for women. So um, I was drunk one night and just got on MSN chat and went to the bisexual section instead of... Uh, the straight section and it turns out that people were a lot quicker to get right down to the nitty gritty you didn't have to talk about feelings and like movies like the notebook before you could just say hey let's have sex so um yeah i just basically um i hooked up with one or two a handful of guys over a few months just by uh saying hey do you want to have sex and they would come and you would just have sex and it was really simple and easy. And I uh, like, hey, this is much better than the uh, the other uh, things I've been doing. So, um, but yeah, I didn't have. Luckily for me, I didn't have to do like most gay men and have sex with hundreds and hundreds of partners, um, which is very very common for gay people. My husband cannot count. He his body count is so high that um, it like it it trumps anybody for lack of a better term. Um, he he didn't have to pay for it like Trump or anything. I love that joke, Norwood. That was funny that you did the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. So that's that's my story. I met my husband. Um, one night he just said, "Hey, what's up?" And I said, "Hey, what's up?" And he's like, "Where are you at?" And I'm like, "I live pretty far away." And I'm like, "Yeah, we should hook up sometime." And he said, "How about right now?" And he came down and got me. I told him my name was Trevor, and I spelled it the way I guess that a, a he thought I was a black dude. So that was pretty funny, but he obviously didn't didn't care or whatever. But and I lived in the ghetto, so he thought for sure that I, he was gonna come to some black dude instead of a white guy. So that's a funny little story about how we met. Wait, did he not know what you looked like uh, be- beforehand? Yeah, he had no clue what I looked like. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I'm glad it worked out though. I, yeah, we've been together ever, ever is... since. We've you know we've only spent like the longest we've spent apart is maybe a week, but we've um, yeah we've always been together ever since. We've been happily married. We've been together 20 years. Been married for 13 years as long as it's legal in my state. And he just walked in with my coffee and smiled when he heard the, the story. So, yeah, that's that's my story, guys. I chose to be gay when I was about 22. I'm a big advocate of um, making a choice as an adult about your sexuality. You don't know what the hell you're going to be or what you want to do with life. So I feel like we definitely pressure kids into um, having a label about their sexuality. And it disgusts me, honestly. That's just what it is. That's my story. Thank you for letting me share. I hope everyone's having a great day. Hey, yeah, yeah. Let me I, let me I, let me respond to that first. Um, if you don't follow Travis, you are missing out on a real one here on X. That's step one. Step two is um, 4N 4L is a friend of mine. They are on stage. I refer to them as Jason because they keep changing their name in a way that uh, I don't want to interact with it. In case my account gets okay, well, I, I was calling that account anal for the longest time, but. But that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You can. You can. Um, okay. You can. If you say uh, so. Yeah. So uh, just a heads up to the room. They're on my team. Um, but going back to what Travis was saying about choosing. Yeah. I mean, I think I think for me, it was cut and dry. Like I knew exactly when it was. And like, I mean, I, I host gay pool parties in my backyard regularly. Like I cannot tell you the number of weenies I see on a regular basis. And they do nothing for me. Okay. Now, that being said, Tom Cruise might get it. I mean, he just might, because that's Maverick. Um, so when I say you can kind of walk yourself through it logically, I, to me, it's a spectrum, okay? Like, if you're if you're into porn, right, which I am, I love porn. Now, I love uh, porn that's done authentically. There, there's a woman in Spain who, uh, I, can, I can DM you the link, I'm not gonna put it out in the open, um, but there's a woman in Spain that it's like it's like porn uh, by women for women, and 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 it's very like uh, honest in the interaction, okay. But if you're a straight dude on Pornhub and you're watching guys and girls, 
well, why do you need the guy in there? Like that, like the that that's that's the crack in the wall of the spectrum. You know what I mean? So I can completely understand Travis from your perspective of going, hey, you know, I like both of these, but I like this one a little bit better, and my interactions with them are more valuable for for me personally, for my mental state, for my emotional state. Like, yeah, in that sense, it's not necessarily a choice. You're just agreeing with where you are on the spectrum and being, I see you, I see you, Jason, waving, I see you. Okay, you don't have to wave and emoji me and all this with like multiple colored hands. Um, okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go to Jason just because she'll freak out and then we'll go Trickster and then Bear. Go ahead, Jason. It's your choice, that's your baby. Go ahead, let him decide if he's your man or baby. Travis, you are, I'm, I've been bullish on you since day one, since I got suspended as Sincerely Wong. I am Sincerely Wong. And, um, yeah, I was mute D in, in my past life, but I got suspended. So, yes, nor would I understand why I would, how, but probably not de-boost your engagement. But, Travis, yeah, I've seen you. I've heard you in your Dr. Heath spaces. I'm asexual. I'm half non-binary, one half of zero, and an area and mutation in the 404 server error matrix. And I'm also female. But I'm bullish on gays. I've always been. I love gays. I'm pro Pride Month. But I'm bearish. I'm bearish on this world and how we treat ourselves, including the pride people, including the blacks and whites, including the yin and yangs, okay? Privet, buenos dias, privet, bonjour poly say. Anyways, Dogod, I love you. Travis, Ilibadik, Novod, Voss is good. Um, my name is, my number is also Beedolf. But anyways, I have to go take the shower. I'm an OnlyFans model. I have to go to a sports event and I have to work at 900, 0900 PST, Bruda. So I have to work, bitches. I have to work, 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 twerk, twerk, twerk. Anyways, got to go. Four and four. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, sorry, sweetie. sorry. Okay, bye. Weird. Four and four, over and out. I'll be listening. Wop, 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 wop. Yo, I see you later, that. Anal. Have fun, have, have fun <laughs> dancing. Uh, uh, I hope you see, I hope you come to Christ. Um, Yeah, a good friend of mine, actually. I love, I love this one. Uh, I don't know what the fuck to say. Uh, sucked a couple dicks in my day. I don't know what to say. So, sorry, God. Um, well, <laughs> you know, hey, listen, listen, hey, listen, trickster. You put one in your mouth, you're a cocksucker for life. It's just the rule. Yeah, that's what I hear. That's what I heard. So, well, I mean, yeah, labels are labels will be labels, from what I understand. La labels not be labels. You don't look them in the eyes. Labels be yeah. labels be labels. Don't main I don't maintain eye contact. True. true. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Bear. You had your hand up. And, and listen, guys, I, yeah. I, I, I do I do actually have a hair appointment at 10 o'clock, so we literally have about 10 minutes before I have to go, so let's make it count. All right. I have to address Travis here because he and I were talking around each other sort of and tried to talk to each other a little bit yesterday in the space when there was just like way too many people and passions in there. And it got, and there were a couple other people who were as fiery as Mr. Travis and things kind of got, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, lost in the woods or something. But I want to address Travis. Travis, I do respect your opinions uh, or your, I do have a bit of critical feedback and not in a mean way. I think this, this could serve you well. When we're talking about the spectrum of humanity, and we're talking about people's lived and learned experiences and their stories. And then you have your own story. Your story is, is absolutely maybe true for you. But your story may not be necessarily true for someone else. One pattern of your speech is speaking in absolutes that don't leave enough of a area for somebody else to to be their own truth in that, like, for instance, two things you said just a bit ago, when you said sex is obviously for procreation and um, the pressuring for sex, that is your opinion. It's a, it's a subject, more opinion that may be true, true for you, but in, in the entirety, uh, especially the mammalian, uh, hey bear. animal kingdom. Hey bear, hey bear, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pull in the reins just a little bit. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But you need to talk to Travis a few more times 
before making the statements you're making right now. And the only reason I say that is that's my buddy, right? And and he's and he's in my space, so he he knows that I know him. So what he's saying right now is is under the umblank uh, uh, under the blanket the um blanket is there an, is there an umbrella blanket? Someone should invent that. Under the um blanket of being in a space hosted by me, you're completely right. You're completely right. And he doesn't talk like that if he's not in here. You're completely well, I mean, right. I, yeah, yeah. I was referring to our conversation yesterday, too. It was the same way. There were just a few things like his labels thing. For some people, those are very important because for some people, they've been castigated and thrown out and and community association with labels is easy. And for some people, that's very important for them. And for others, they don't even want labels and I don't think we should apply them to people who, even children who haven't applied them to themselves. I think we should respect everybody's autonomy and how they wish to identify. It's just common respect, to, in my opinion. Children who don't get and I'm labels. And Travis children, is wrong. They don't know shit. They don't get to put labels on anything. They don't know shit. So leave the kids alone. But if they gave themselves that label, wouldn't you insisting them not being a label, not being leaving them alone? Kids don't get labels. They don't care what kids... Children are children are to be seen, not heard. Who gives a shit what a kid thinks? They don't know shit. They need to be guided. They can label they themselves, anybody. but they are also free to change that label as they. Oh. Of course. All the more reason they don't need to have one, right? It makes you think it's a finite. Yeah, decision. I agree. It's a like, final decision. Kids don't get to make decisions. They're stupid. Until you really get to high school, you don't really. I mean, until you get to like late middle school, you don't even really. No, I mean, boyfriend, girlfriend, you might have boyfriend, girlfriend when you're really little, but you don't really know it, what it is. You know? I don't know, dude. I don't, I feel like you're, you're right in that. I'm, I've been like, a really, I, I've been kind of aggressive lately the last few days, but yesterday I was on the side of the road with a bunch of traffic. It was really loud. So I know it sounds like I was screaming. I can usually be a little bit calmer and um, I'm, I'm all about love and respect. And I, I don't mean to come at you again. I don't know why we don't, we, we definitely clash for some reason, Bear. But I don't know if you heard it at the end of this space yesterday. My closing statement was I told somebody I despise the term queer. It was derogatory when I was growing up. So when mm -hmm. I hear someone label themselves as queer, it just it triggers me. And when I hear someone say there's queer kids, it triggers the shit out of me really bad. And it's something I have from my past that I need to deal with, obviously. Um, I guess some people are telling me it's a term of endearment or some shit. But for me... I'm going to get real, I'm going to say some shit really controversial right here. It's like the N-word. I don't care if it's a term of endearment. We need to get rid of that word. It's disgusting. I don't want to hear anyone saying it, period. That's it. No, uh, I, let, I me, let me let let me me hop in here. Word. I got to hop in the middle of this. Um, I'm, I will personally, I'd like to start by declaring that I'm a free speech absolutist. absolutist and so um, me too. I, just, I have to just say that. And then I'm, I'm not going to say other things to try to offend people right now, but um, I will do that. Um, generally speaking, um, let me think now. Whew, okay. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. Oh, I always thought the, like, I also, uh, Travis, I also, I can, um, empathize with you cause I also have a substantial amount of PTSD around, uh, the term queer generally because, um, I, uh, I identify it with, um, having a football thrown at me and then being attacked by all the strong boys so um <laughs> yeah you know we all we all have a past i guess you're the queer so yeah you're the queer. So, that, that, that was me that was me the queer when so, i was a kid but i didn't lose i mostly won yeah i was too young for that i mean now i'll kill anybody on on site but uh for any reason but uh yeah it's like back, back then i wasn't quite prepared for all that so um i certainly matured much later than all the other um hairy mustache boys so yeah, you know, but I mean, <laughs> I certainly, I, I, uh, I also feel like, um, in regards to bear, um, I, uh, when my kids turned two, I, uh, I personally labeled them, um, transvestite and had them start on puberty blockers and inducted into surgery. So I, I definitely see where you're coming from. That's, that's not my person. Well, uh, no, I 100%, I 100 agree with you, Bear. Welcome I mean, I do. Welcome to Norwood Space. Welcome to Norwood Space. Welcome to Norwood Space, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy. Your that, is not that was an accident. That was an accident. Oh, my God. That's this is my first cup of coffee. All right, so so here's the deal, guys. Um, I've got to go get my hair cut. 
in 17 minutes. It's going to take me about 10 minutes to get there. So we've got seven minutes. Uh, we're going to drop all of this topic completely. We're going to completely reset everything. Okay. Uh, the past couple of weeks have been a lot. Zen is in this title for a reason uh, because shit is hitting the fan in a part of the world where shit typically doesn't hit the fan that often. Um, there are parts of the world where shit stays in the fan and uh, we get to do this right here. So I just want to know, like, how's everybody doing? Like, not not like, what have you been through? Not, you know, give me an example. Um, this and 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 I'll, and I'll start. We'll go around the room, then I got to end it because I'm getting shaggy as fuck. Um, I, I I need to get my neck cleaned up. So, uh, I was I was I was in a really weird place uh, after the debate. I was like, we've got you know, two old white men. Don't care what side of the aisle you're on. Um, that cannot sit down with Elon Musk and have any fucking clue what he's talking about. They cannot sit down with a Gen Zer and have any fucking clue what they're talking about. Uh, one of them completely bombed. The other one got shot at. He got shot at. Like 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 we are shooting at did political. I, did damage. I tell you I was there? I literally watched the shooter take the shot. I heard the shot heard around the world with my own ears. Fucking crazy, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hold on. I might open this space back up when I get back from my haircut because it's just a net cleanup, so it's not going to take long. Um, then we had what, what, what I think, and again, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, uh, somebody gave up power. And, 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 and I think it's necessary to recognize that. Like... He did not have to do that. Nobody nobody could tell him to do that without really exercising some extreme machinations of our Constitution. Um, he quit. Uh, then all of a sudden, in my world, there's someone named Charlie XCX that has like some say over a label from England as to, you know, whatever Brad is. And like people like her campaign is changing you know, background banners to match it. Um, the Olympics are starting. Oh my God, Celine Dion on the Eiffel Tower. Fucking Celine Dion on the Eiffel Tower with what she's dealing with, okay? The Olympic torch is currently a hot air balloon floating over Paris. Um, it's not football season. Uh, Max Verstappen seems to be faltering in his dominance in his F1 season. We're at the spa in Belgium today or tomorrow. Uh, I haven't seen qualifying yet. Uh, I had to go to uh, the DMV with my mother, who just recently moved in to my neighborhood and help her get her driver's license here in Florida. I attended a gay birthday party last night and watched Twisters, which was such a disappointment because it was such a huge, it was such a huge, <laughs> Misha, it was such a huge aspect of my childhood. It was a masterpiece. So, it was a masterpiece. Don't listen to Norwood, guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and Misha, you'll get your turn. You're probably going to go last, like right before we run out of time. So I don't have to hear that bullshit because it sucked. Um, but yeah, like the past couple of weeks have been a lot. So so let's go around the room. This is dancing's first time talking in a space, so we'll start with them. Uh, dancing, how are you? I think there may be a connection issue because I've got a little blue dot next to her. I, I can hear her. Yeah. Yeah, I I think she's stuck. Misha, how are you? I'm doing all right. I think, you know, it's been a whirl in the last two weeks. And I think, you know, it's kind of like, remember the stuff you can control. Um, uh, whatever. Yeah, you know the proverb. I was about to say something I thought that was, was going to be wise, but, you know, it ended up that way. But I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, um, as stressful as some stuff in the world can be, like, I was not there at that rally. I'm not the one leading the investigation. I'm not the one that told Joe Biden to step down. So while I think it's important for me to stay informed of all this stuff, you know, I also think it's okay for me to say, hey, I want to go see Twisters, for example, twice. 
because it's, it is such an amazing and fun movie. And I just love watching Glenn Powell play as Tyler Owens and have this romance with Kate while being in these massive trucks and tornadoes. It was a hoot. I just can't recommend it enough. We're all entitled to our opinion. Uh, Trickster, how yeah. are you? Perfect, perfect, perfect. I will say the last few weeks have been a, certainly a trial of temperance uh, and on multiple fronts. But I was, I was truly hoping, honestly, I was truly hoping that uh, when you said you watched Twisters at a gay birthday party that you were watching the, the participants play Twister for hours on end. But, I mean, I am that disappointed. Was the end of the party. Nice. Well, not so bad after all. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll see you later here once you uh, get cleaned up. Thanks, man. I, uh, you know, I love these spaces. They, uh, uh, they offer me some kind of solace I can't explain. So, you know, I love you, man. Yeah, same here, dude. Love you, too. Okay, so dancing's raising their hand. Um, we can't hear you, dear. So try to talk right now. We'll see if we can hear you. I can't. Okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I need you. Okay, okay, hold on. Wait, if you can hear me, cancel the invite host, drop down to listener, and I'll bring you back up as speaker. My only option is to remove you completely from the space, and we don't have time for that. So cancel the co-host invite. You'll drop down to listener, and then I'll throw you a mic, and you can come back up. Travis, how are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. My mama got a new hip, like, about two weeks ago. The Walmart in my town ran out of Oxycontin, so she was a little bit upset. They finally got some back in stock. I took her to Walmart. She brought her little chihuahua. He's not a service dog. He took a shit in Walmart. I was really embarrassed. That's it. Okay, first of all, there's no shame at taking a shit in Walmart. We've all done it. Tell your mom's chihuahua it's fine. And um, I have some people in the country music industry, and Mama Got a Brand New Hip is a fucking song waiting to happen, bro. Mama Got a Brand New Hip. Also, a dog took a shit in Walmart. <laughs> dog did the, and the, and the chihuahua. And the, and the Oxycontin. The in. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah that's, that's the second verse. Bear, you're the you're the last word. Then I gotta go. How are you? I am I am well. I am going to be traveling to Ohio here in just uh, a few hours. Um, I'm going to share a picture. I'm very proud of this young lady. Uh, I shared it to the space. That is my sister. Her name is uh, Kelly, and Kelly is launching her third thing today. So she is a doctorate she i mean she's got a doctorate and she's a research scientist for blood and pathogenic science and uh she is a professional cheerleader for the cincinnati Bengals, and uh she's a college professor so i don't know how so much time but she just launched her own um like music magazine and uh it, it deals on like fashion and music uh, featuring artists from around the world she's got a lot of like models from like palestine and ukraine right now she's trying to feature different people in different areas and uh, she got a huge investment opportunity for it so she's having her release party tonight black tie affair kind of deal i got an invite to that so i'm not normally a black tie kind of person but i'm really proud of her she's an independent wealthy lady who's done very well for herself and does a lot of good in this world so I'm happy that I'm going to get to go do that with her. Thank you guys for coming. Um, Bear, please DM me your sister's phone number since she's a cheerleader for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals and I'm straight as a fucking arrow. So uh, I'd, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me in my backyard. Uh, I do this every Saturday around 830 when the pool filter cuts on and I run it for as long as I can. Sometimes it's cut short when the landlady wakes up. And sometimes it's cut short because I need a haircut. But uh, my haircut is for all of our sake. So I'll see you guys let's next time. Let's go, Bungles. Let's bum, go, bum, Bungles. Bum, bum, bum. Who day? Who day? Who day?
Hello, everyone. So that was Norwood's Yard. Wasn't that fun? If you are joining us, you can join us and watch this completely or listen again. Go to Norwood's Yard here. Norwood is profile on X and go down to the space. Let me do a full recording. So a nice hour, hour and a half long conversation with Norwood this morning. We're going to spend a little bit of our weekend with him as the turtles, of course. And we are going to probably stay on a little bit longer. Maybe we'll play a little bit of Civ. I'm trying to decide. I'm going to do a quick sound check while I'm doing that, guys. So you might hear some double audio. Norway this morning. Great to spend a little bit of our weekend with him as the turtles, of course. And we are going to...